Interfaces are one of my favorite parts of GraphQL, but if you've ever tried to use them with Apollo Federation, you know they can be a bit of a pain. So we've released an exciting new feature we call Entity Interfaces that make using interfaces fun again. Too many interfaces. Let's start with a product subgraph. Here I have a field that returns a list of products, and I've chosen to define product as an interface. I have a few different types of products like book, movie, and video game, they share a few fields, like the ID and price, but they all have fields that are distinct, like book.author and movie.director, and this lets me really model my domain accurately. Now, if you're not familiar with interfaces, you should really check them out. There's an intermediate schema design course on the Odyssey tutorial site that has a whole section on interfaces. Next, let's hop over to the review subgraph. Right now, all I have is one mutation, submit review, that allows you to submit an, a rating and a product ID to add a review to the reviews database. Our database might be structured something like this, where we have a unique ID for each review, we store the rating, and I store only the product's ID so I know which product this review is related to. But now I have a new feature requirement. I want to return the list of the top rated products. Let's try to do that and see what happens. I'll start by adding a query root field, top rated products, that returns a list of products. I'll need to define a product type in this subgraph, and I'll have to use interface because the other subgraph says it's an interface. If they don't match, it's going to break composition. The only field I can return in the review subgraph is the ID. That's the only field I've stored in the database. Now let's use Rover Dev to run a development version of our supergraph and see how this works. I'll run Rover Dev once for the product subgraph, and then I'll run it again for the review subgraph. Now we can hop over to Sandbox and try out our graph. Let's start with that products query. Here we can see how interfaces are used. We can fetch ID and title from the product, but also those unique fields like book.author and movie.director. We can see this all working, but this only uses that product subgraph. Let's try our new field, top rated products. When we try that, we're going to get a really interesting error. It reads, abstract type product must resolve to an object type at runtime. It's actually not possible to return an interface. You have to return one of its concrete types, like book, movie, or, or video game. This is the root of the whole issue with interfaces and federation. The message has an interesting solution here. We could provide a resolve type function. But if we tried to write that function, how do we do it? We'd have to return book, movie, or video game, but the only thing that this subgraph knows is the product's ID. This is where entity interfaces come in. Entities allow us to join data between graphs, and now we can use that with interfaces as well. If you're not familiar with entities, go back to Odyssey and check out the Federation from Day One course where we explain all the details. To start using this new feature, we need to define our interface as an entity, and the way you do that is adding a key, like any other entity. The first thing we need to do is change our version of Federation to 2.3. That's why we released this new feature. Now we can write at key fields ID on our product interface type. We now need to define a reference resolver for the product interface, but this is really familiar if we've ever defined a reference resolver for an entity. Now that we've defined the interface as an entity in the product subgraph, we can do something really cool in the review subgraph. We can start treating product as a type. Now we'll be able to return a product without knowing whether it's a book, movie, or video game. The query planner will go back to the product subgraph to find that detail out. To make this compose, we'll need to add two directives. First, we'll need to upgrade to Federation 2.3 again, and then we'll import the key directive and a new one we call interface object. We'll define the same key that we use in the product subgraph. And we'll also add this new directive interface object because that tells Composition to treat this as an interface in the supergraph, even though it's at a product in this subgraph. So let's try that query again. And it worked. We check out the query plan. It's actually pretty familiar. You've ever used entities before. The review subgraph returns a reference to a product with its type name and ID. But the unique thing here, it's not a type name. It's the interface name of product. But you can turn that around and ask the subgraph for the real type name and any other fields on the products. Another cool thing we can do is extend the interface from our other subgraph. So let's add reviews for each product. 
We'll add a field and return a list of reviews. The resolve view right here is exactly what you'd expect. Now the reviews field is available on all the types of the product interface. So what did we do here? We had this useful abstraction of the product interface, but it was really hard for the review subgraph team to use it. With entity interfaces and the interface object directive, the review subgraph team just doesn't have to care if it's an interface at all. They can contribute fields to it and reference it as if it's any other entity type. This feature unlocks a lot of patterns that were difficult or sometimes even impossible to do in Federation before. So to learn more, head over to our docs at apollo.dev.